with the, the schedule you ended up using and getting back immediately afterward? Um, you know, obviously the game worked out our way, so it, 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 the schedule seemed to work out in a decent way. I, I talked to our leadership group today, and they, they, they felt better than they did a, a year ago at Nevada, going out to the field and stuff. So um, I guess, you know, it was a positive as, as we look at it. Um, you know, sitting on a plane at 3 a.m. Central Time and not taking off yet is pretty frustrating to, you know, again, as you're going through today's scheduling of, of what things are and getting back at 6 a.m. Is, 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 is tough and coming back in today and, and doing those things, but we're not the only team in the country that has to do that now, but you, know, you wish it was looked at in, in, in the big picture sometimes. Lance, obviously you and Dion kind of have very different personalities, but you, what might you say? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's a, a little more communicative <laughs> to the media. But uh, just looking at how the team building has gone for them, do you see any similarities between the two teams uh, in the early years? I have a lot of respect for Coach Sanders and, and Coach Prime and how he's gone about it. And I told him that one of the first times I met him because I, the, the thing that we do have in common is we, we've, we, we've come up through ranks that, that aren't necessarily conventional to get a power four football job. And that is he coached high school football. He coached at HBCU University that doesn't have many resources. And he found a way to be successful. And he found a way to, to build his program and his own philosophy. And I told him that when I met him in Arizona, how much respect I had for him because of that. And, and uh, you know, in, in whether it be our styles or personas, he is, he is probably um, was ahead of the curve and probably being upfront about what the landscape of, of college football was changing and what it was going to be like and where it's heading. And that's not his fault. He's he's taken what what's been put on us and and he's and he's gone about building a football team that's one of the most one of the most improved in college football in a very short period of time. They're, they're a very talented team. They're playing with a lot of confidence. Um, um, again, in, in all three phases, they've been highly productive, and he's got himself a really good football team with a chance to, to play a lot of football again. And, and just looking at Travis Hunter, obviously he's had a special year with those guys. What makes it so difficult to play against a two-way player at this level? Well, again, he's, he's just multi-talented in so many ways. He's going to be a first-round pick, if not the first player taken. He's favored to win the Heisman. He's you know, I, I joke with our, our uh, strength staff all the time, don't don't give me all this GPS data when the guy's playing 125 snaps a game or whatever it is, he seems to, but they've done a great job. And again, that's a, that's a credit to Coach Prime and his staff because how for him to be able to play the way he does, prepare him to get ready to play two game plans, know what to do, keep him as healthy as they have throughout his career is a, is, is a great job of, of monitoring the situation. So, but he's explosive, um, you know, he's, he's a special athlete of, of our time and the fact that the way his ball skills and reactions and everything that he can do as, as a player, his ability to make you miss as an offensive threat or when the ball is in his hands either way is, makes him extremely dangerous. So. It'll be a big test for, for both sides of the ball for us. So have you followed their season much over the course of it? Have followed their season? Not, yeah. not, not a ton. Okay. And, you know, I, um, I forgot what game we were coming back from. Um, the, the, when they, the Baylor game, I caught the, the end of that part on the radio and part on television. I got home, watched little bits here and there of them. But again, this is a team we haven't played. This is a team that we really didn't have a ton of crossover film on as far as opponents, as far as how it falls for us. So really I'm still about uh, you know, a third way through my all, all the film that I'll, that I'll get through. But I know I'm just watching them in these last few weeks, they're, they're very impressive on, and schematically, defensively getting after you, being aggressive. Um, like I said, they're disruptive in so many ways. I know a year ago there was something, I think their offensive line has vastly improved. And uh, again, uh, a lot of playmakers in a lot of different areas that 
naked people in space that are tough to break down. I think we saw LJ after the game on Saturday. Just do you have any update on the LJR in space? Uh, LJ, LJ did a few things today. I don't know. I put him in a highly questionable spot right now. Um, yeah, you know, lost him and um, other guys had to step up, but we'll see where he's at. Maybe you hit on a little bit there, but with Travis, have you seen a player do what he's doing in terms of playing both sides of the ball at such an impressive level, even going back to you know, Division three days or, or something like that? I don't remember anybody like this that plays that many snaps and that much um, both ways. Not, you know, usually it's a guy that gets maybe used situationally. If it's an offensive player, maybe situationally as a, as a nickel or something, or if it's a you know, a guy that's a corner, they'll use him in sweeps and, and bubble screens and things like that. To see him play as much is, is definitely something that's very uncommon. Um, you know, I haven't even really had a chance to have a comment on Shadour and the, and the athlete that he is and his ability to extend plays, his arm strength and accuracy, um, the ability to create first downs when he scrambles, all those things are, are highly impressive as well. So when they're, when they're clicking, they're awful tough to defend. I'm curious for you guys on the back end. We've seen Taylor Davis play a, a lot more. How do you feel like he pairs with OJ at that safety spot in terms of the way they play as a tandem? It's, it's, who's Taylor that? Davis. Taylor, you know, Taylor continues to get better and he's got a bright future. He's taken the coaching a lot better and, and doing some things that, it, that has made him more productive here in the last last couple of weeks. You know, it's it's a little bit of baptism by, uh, by fire here just going, going through it all of having to uh, – learn on the job based on injuries versus some other way. Sometimes you can get guys, you feed them some snaps, but he continues to learn and take the coaching that DK's given him and, and you see him get better. He and OJ, they're communicating on the same page a lot better. And then, and then yesterday, you know, again, they, they've taken um, a nice step. We played Marvin back there a little bit this week as well. And we'll see what this week's game plan presents. And then with Dean Miller, uh, it seems that he's had more end product the last couple weeks, just what have you seen from him since maybe that first bye week? And again, he continues to get better, and you know, you worry about a guy like Dean. You talk about his progress and everything that he's done here, and um, you know, at this stage of the of the season, if you worry about guys that wear down a little bit, but he, he's played a lot. He played probably with a higher snap count probably Saturday than he has a bit, um, but he continues to you know. My, the thing I really appreciate about him is the effort level and strain in which he plays. He continues his motor. Again, create pressure and disruption, and and uh, trying to get Shadur off off rhythm, and um, it's going to be important. So we'll need another big game from him. Lance, I know Bryce Cable, who was mm -hmm. doubtful at one time, yeah. that came in and played. What did you see from him? Yeah, you know, he kind of progresses. One of those we kind of wait and see, and we, we probably got a lot more out of him than than we had, we anticipated. Then when Logan went down, of course, we had to make another move there with Bryce over. So. I thought Kelvin did a good job stepping in, but you know Bryce is, um, you know, it's, it's still pretty tender. We got to see where it's at, but he, he continues to work hard, and I thought he had a, he had a nice game. And then what are the challenges that the safeties and the corners face with the way Colorado throws it and the things they can do in space? Well, again, like you, you kind of hit it right there. It's the way they can stretch it with speed and you know and and, and concepts, and when they get the, they want to get the ball in people's hands, and they're aggressive at all times. Um, but when they when, when they get to when they get to get the ball the guys in space you know you got to rally and tackle well and uh, you know they create a lot of missed tackles you know by secondaries across the country all year and that'll be something that we got to be good on. How, how challenging is Senior Day, but somewhere else? Yeah, you know it's again I I've, I've said all year that is uh, our guys have handled things so well I think. Um, you know, it is what it is and, and where those things are at. I think, again, when you talk about part of your senior season or, or your college career, it's the friendships and relationships and things like that. Um, many times, uh, I think you look back at things, you, you talk about times in the locker room, you talk about trips, you talk about bus rides, whatever those are, and hopefully that's what this group will continue to grasp onto, some of the great memories. And, Hopefully we'll be able to create some more here in the last couple of weeks. And and uh, the thing I will say is you got to be careful that you know, we have a lot of guys that will be recognized on, on Saturday. 
and uh, and so I want them to, to reflect and enjoy all that. It can't it can't overtake you emotionally. That drains you so much. I've been part of some teams where that's been where you don't play very well because it, it becomes a, an emotional drain of uh, especially right before kickoff sometimes. So hopefully uh, maybe that would be a small positive of not being you know in Lawrence per se, but. We talked about it again in senior day. To me, sometimes it's like a homecoming game. It's, as a football team, it's, it's your job to go out and play well so you have a great memory of it and win a football game. And, and if we can balance that, I don't want to take it away from, from, from the guys, but if we can balance those things of what the day is, hopefully we can make it a special day for them. We ask you this every year, um, but your memory of this particular senior class, what, what will stand out to you, whether that's individuals or a collective thing? Um, there's going to be so many with this yeah. group because, uh, you know, the ones that, especially the ones that were here for all four um, with us, um, you know, the ones that, that stayed, the ones that, that believed, the ones that uh, were really uh, program changers in, in what they've done, not just on the field, but how they've gone about it daily and, uh, that, you know, that, that bought into what was being done and, and saw the benefits and and hopefully, uh, you know, when we have former players come back and watch practices and stuff, I, I, I hope that there'll be those type of guys that come back and, and they, they talk about the ones that, the, the days with when they were here and what they, they helped uh, implement and, and put into this program. Going back to Saturday really quickly, it was a, a low possession game. Mm -hmm. Do you go into games thinking sometimes that this is going to be a game where we think we're getting like three possessions, four possessions and a half? I don't know if we necessarily break it down like that, Michael, but we, you can tell that there's games that they, they, you can, you know, we get things that talk about possessions and per game and time of possession and where it's at. Yeah, we, we have an idea that, that that can happen in games like that. And, you know, a 10 minute drive, you know, is, is definitely one that, that shortened up the possession game pretty quickly in the second half. And when you do play, in those more lower possession games. And how does that change the way you approach it as a head well, coach or as an offense defense? Yeah, you have to look at it. I think you see it in football today where you talk about whether or not you, are you gonna go for it on fourth down, touchdowns versus field goals, all those things can be a factor depending on what's happening in the game because if it's if if things are happening, are, are you gonna you know, is it gonna take a touchdown to win or is it gonna be close enough to win by a field goal? Those type of things are gonna can play a part into uh, the decision making of, of going for it. That's that's why um, right before the, the we we punted when 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 Jalen punted, you know, the first thing we were going to think about going for it because we were out of field goal range. But then it was because it, it was possessions were going to be a part of it. But we still thought at that time to give them if we didn't make it at that distance of, of a fourth down to gain, it was. Let, let's let's try to pin them back and, and, and play some defense and you know roll roll the dice so to speak on on, on getting the next possession in better field position. Yeah, Coach Lapo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.